Hello everybody, my name is Zach, aka The Weather Gamer, bringing you VBL Season 7 Draft Recap for your Chicago Charizards. For those of you that are unaware, I have played in the VBL twice before, I think? I actually need to go check that. It might be twice, it might be once. I know I played in VBL as I took over in Season 5 or 4. Uh, I did play in Season 6. I know that. So, I just saw that one. I know I did it one other... There it is. Season 4. Uh, yeah, so I played in Season 4. That was when I took over for a team. And then I played again... I just lost it. I know I saw Season 6. There it is. Season 6. Oh yeah, this was the Rillaboom team. Again, I took over. So this is actually the first time I've ever drafted in VBL. Um, I've taken over teams both times. So, But I did uh, end up with the 6th overall pick. This draft was very freaking strange. We're required to take a tier 1, 2, 2 tier 3s, a tier 4, a tier 5, and a mega. And then 400 free points, you know, standard tiering things, but... This draft was very weird. I ended up as the sixth pick, and my first round pick stunned me to get at six. Um, I might as well just jump into it. I got Dragapult sixth overall. Five coaches passed on Dragapult. I was so stunned, I couldn't believe it. Like, why would you leave Dragapult to the sixth pick? Megalopony went one, Celesteela went two, Mega Gallade went 3, Heatran went 4, Mega Scissor went 5, and so I took Dragapult at 6. I could not fathom it. I really couldn't. Dragapult is such a beast. It's coming off of a massive PBAL season for me. I think I have a chance to run it up again. You know, this might be the Mon that challenges their aura for most kills in its in my draft league career, and it might be the next Zero Aura, where if I can draft it, I'm drafting it. This thing is just so good. There's spec sets, there's the Dragon Dance subset, there's the will o -Wisp Hex set, there's the Bandit set, there's a Scarf set that I've used. This thing just has so much versatility, and it just hits like a truck. You have to have a normal type, a fairy type, or a bulky dark type on your team in order to slow this thing down. So, I, you know, if I can get Dragapult set up, it's just gonna go Vroom again, like it did previously. I'm super... They banned Urshifu Single Strike, too. So I'm really surprised that Dragapult even made it into, um, The cuts. Like, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. I can't fathom how I managed to get Dragapult at 6th overall. So, coming back around into round 2... I swear I'm not redrafting my PBAL team. You'll see that this is the last overlap that those two teams share. I did pick up Ferrothorn again um, as my steel type. Um, it's just, it's a very good defensive mon, very good hazard setter, very fantastic physical defense. Can be very good as a spadef wall too. I think those stats are like 10 or 20 points different, but they're both over 115. So very good physical and special wall. Very annoying, you know, stealth rock spikes, Rocky Helmet, a Berry, um, Leftovers, Leech Seed, um, Iron Barbs for just recoil. This thing puts in so much chip damage. Um, while it may not get a lot of kills, it puts in enough chip damage that if I start chipping teams down, Dragapult just sweeps. You know, there's the Iron Defense Body Press set to take out the opposing Dark types. Um, it's a fairy killer, which Dragapult greatly appreciates. Um, Dragapult can kind of sponge the fire-type hits for Ferrothorn. So, again, it pairs beautifully, and I really liked how it came together in PBAL, so I tried it again. Now, I did not grab Sylveon. I promise, Sylveon was not my third pick. My third pick was actually uh, Blaze Race. I love this thing. You know I love this thing. I've been using Cinderace in other leagues and enjoying it. And if it wasn't for the fact that Slow King is just a monster for me, um, 
Cinderace would be my kill leader in BR, uh, NCL. No, what is it? BRL. Yeah, would be my kill leader in BRL. Um, Cinderace plus Pult are two massive wall breakers. Um, Cinderace just smacks. I mean, there's the bulk up set, there's the banded set, scarf set, heavy duty boots with port change support set potentially, but you hit a fireball off of banded and there's just not a lot that can switch in and tank it. I also am starting to build a pivot core if you haven't noticed again I'm building up my pivot core. I've got Dragapult and Cinderace now that both can you turn around and pivot around to get me into position. So after this I started getting sniped on water types. Slow King went, uh, Slow Bro went down. I didn't want to get Mega Slow Bro. Uh, Sylveon was gone, even though I had debated it. Togekiss was gone. Um, I was debating Togekiss. Again, PBAL team, because what other fairy types do I draft besides Togekiss and Sylveon? <laughs> um, so I decided to change it up this time. I went and grabbed a fairy type that I've only used three times. The first time, I had some pretty mixed success with, and I did enjoy it. The second time, I dropped out of the league before I could even attempt to use it. But I picked up Primarina. Uh, Primarina is a very, very good Spadef wall. Um, I think its Spadef stat is actually the same as Ferrothorn's. Um, it can be very defensive uh, with the right EVs. It's bulky. It can be annoyingly fast with a Choice Scarf. Um, potential to spook opponents. Specs is very troublesome. It gets flip turned, so it can pivot as well. Um, it giving me three pivots now. Um, and then of course there's the subcall mindset, which if you need any references to what that can do, please see my match from PBAL where I got body bagged and Primarina picked up five kills because I over predicted and didn't keep my Ferrothorn in. So take Primarina off the board so no one can do that to me. <laughs> Anywho, um, this now completes both my cores. I managed to pull off a Fairy Dragon Steel Core and a Firewater Grass Core in four Mons which allowed me to be a lot more flexible with my team um, down the line and you'll see as I pick up mons throughout the draft that I'm very I'm able to be flexible because of this now I have spent a huge chunk of change here and I am going to pay for it because I took two tier ones and two tier twos it's gonna force me to take a lower tier mega or some really crap um, mons down low but I I'm, I'm happy with this team overall so, um, after Primarina, I started looking, I was like, okay, I have Ferrothorn for rocks, and I have no other hazard removal. What can I do about my hazard game here? Because I cannot just have Ferrothorn be my only hazard, um, remover. So, going into the next round, I ended up drafting, sorry, I'm just double checking, I got my order right here, um... I ended up drafting Aerodactyl. Now this is one of the few mons on my team that actually can't pivot. I have one, two, I have two, three mons. I have three out of 11 mons that can't pivot. Every other mon can switch in and out. Um, I wish for Aerodactyl got U-turn, but Aerodactyl gives me Stealth Rocks. It gives me 130 speed, which was a speed tier. I was trying to find something between Dragapult and Arrow. Um, I tend to like running faster teams, um, as long as I can sponge hits, which Ferrothorn and Primarina can sponge hits for me, plus some other ones I take down the line can also sponge some hits for me. Um, I like to be able to take those hits and punch back, uh, or pivot around and all that, soak up. Um, I really wish I would have been able to get Slow King or Slow Bro without having to use my Mega Slot. Because I really wanted another physical wall besides Ferrothorn, but Arrow gives me speed tier that I was looking for. Split Dragapult and Cinderace. Gives me Stealth Rocks. Gives me Defog. Gives me another setup sweeper in the fact that I can run the Dragon Dance set, which I've used to beat Sand Teams before. I don't know if there's a Sand Team this season in VBL. I don't think there's any weather teams. I think the Rain Team post draft scrub their team. So I don't think there's any weather team. Well, there might be a song team, but anyways, um, Dragon Dance said I've used out run weather teams. Um, I've used Arrow with some success in the past, so I brought it back um, just because it fits so many 
pieces to my team that I needed. And it gives me a ground immunity, which you will see I need pretty desperately throughout the draft. So uh, up next, I take Zoroark. So again, I'm working my speed tiers down. Um, I've got Dragapult down to Arrow, down to Cinderace, down to Zoroark. The Cinder to Zoroark is a little bit uncomfortable um, just because it's 14, so some things can slip in between that. But Zoroark was too good to pass up. Um, I have been having some fun with it in NCL. I love Illusion. I just, I love disguising Zoroark around and playing games with it. One of the funniest things with this team, and uh, Huff actually made a suggestion for a mod that I'll talk about here shortly, but Zoroark is actually very scary on this team. Because Dragapult doesn't like, what, fairy types? Seal types? normal types and bulky dark types what does zorark get focus blast sludge bomb flamethrower i can run i could disguise zorark as dragapult nasty plot and rem, as long as i hit the focus blast remove one of dragapult's issues if not two of Dragapult's issues. Which is a very scary thing to think about. Because are you going to attack Dragapult with a Shadow Ball or a Dark Move? That's not going to be super effective. Fairy types are a problem. That's going to be a little bit of an issue. But I really think disguising Zoroark as Dragapult this season is going to lead to some huge, huge issues for my opponents. Even though I've said it now. Um, I also think Zoroark disguised as um, a couple. I'll talk about it more when I get to some of these mods. I, I specifically think that Zoroark disguised as a few mods on my team is really, really going to mess with people. So, um, but I love Zoroark. There's physical sets. There's scarf, band, spec. It literally can run any choice item: life orb, expert belt. It's just, it's it's a potent wall breaker, and it is a very, very fun toy to pair with Dragapult. This, this is one of those things that I'm super excited about, and it pivots. Another U-Turner, so. Um, oh, I guess Cinderace does have hazard control and the fact that it core changes, but still. Um. After that, I picked up Blaziken. Now, before you say you have a Cinderace right there, I know. This was Huff's suggestion. I didn't see another fighting type that I thought would fit my team better. You know, I could have gone Heracross and done my PBAL team again, but I know I have Cinderace. You don't have to tell me that. Blaziken and Cinderace are not coming to the same game, and if they do... It's because my opponent is super weak to fire type and Blaziken is desperately needed. Because Cinderace can side jump kick, I know that. It can act as a fighting type. I know, I get it, I get it. Blaziken is a strange pick and I wasted 100 points which forces me into the lowest tier mega. But Huff mentioned Disguise Zorark as Blaziken and they get the same amount of damage from Stealth Rocks and it can actually cause some headaches for my opponents as well. So it's another mon that does nicely with Zorark to disguise as it does pivot because it gets a U-turn. So I have Blaziken, I have Dragapult, Cinderace, Zorark, Primarina, and Blaziken that all pivot. Like I said, only three mons on this team don't pivot, um, which is really nice. Um, it does give me Defog as well. And you know, I had a lot of fun using uh, Blaziken. The only other time I used it was in LTPL before I dropped out of that season. And um, it was my kill leader. So I, I do enjoy Blaziken. I'd like to see how it does here in a full tier. But I know Cinderace is right there. Shut up. Blaziken may not make it to the end of the season. I may switch my fighting type up. But for now, I'm going to try to use the chicken. After this, I started picking off uh, my lower tier stuff just because I knew I needed to get after that. Um, this draft was super weird. Wall, Wall Rain literally went two picks after I took Dragapult. 
so I kind of was able to pick through the lower stuff while everyone was taking their higher stuff because everyone took lower stuff early, mid to low stuff early. Um, I picked up Claydol as my tier four. Now I really wanted to keep Claydol in NCL, but because of the points, I couldn't. I am excited to try Claydol this generation because of the rapid spin buff. It actually can be kind of a viable setup sweeper. Gives me a base 75 speed tier. So again, I'm working my speed tiers down. They're, the lower tiers are not great. Like I get down to base 100. Actually, I get down to base 95. And then I get a pretty big speed jump. And then I go from from 95 down to 80. 80 down to Claydol 75. 75 down to Korean Marina. Um, and then I have Ferrothorn and my last pick or one of my, actually my next pick, um, are kind of alone on an island down low in my tier five. One of my tier fives, because I had to take two of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's nice. It gives me stealth rocks. It gives me rapid spin. Um, ghosts can't freely come into spin block because Claydol gets shadow ball. Um, it's a levitator, so I do have another um, ground immunity, which my team desperately needs because Cinderace and Blaziken bolts don't like it and Ferrothorn doesn't resist and I take another Mon later. I still don't have my electric type which also does not like ground type moves. But yeah it's I mean it gets nasty plot and rapid spin so it could very easily you know start to build up on you. It's got base 120 spadef so it's a nice spadef wall to eat hits. I was right Ferrothorn and Primarina share a spadef uh, stat of 116 so it's not bad physically defensive either 105 is not terrible so it gives me defensive option support with entry hazards it gets teleport too so i can sponge a hit and then teleport um and do whatever i kind of want there so i i'm excited to try clay all i did not have a lot of success with it in gen 7 but i think the buffs to gen 8 should make it a little better now one thing that is glaringly missing from my team is I have no cleric, and that is where I saw, you know, I have all the pivots in the world, I have a pretty good hazard control, um, with at least one de two decent defoggers and a decent rapid spinner, um, but I have no clerics, and that's gonna come back to bite me, and I know it will, so I picked up a cleric with my first tier 5 pick. I got Wigglytuff. I know I've drafted Wigglytuff one time before, but I don't think I ever brought it, or if I did, I brought it like twice. It might have been lower tier again, same season I got uh, um, Blaziken. This does give me a second fairy type, I am aware of that, but it gives me a normal type, which is nice. It gives me something with a massive 140 HP stat, so I can pretty much pass wishes to whatever I want and have them pretty much healed. It, it'd be very easy for me to wish port into Cinderace or Dragapult or Zoroark or even Primarina. I can wish port into and uh, be very well done. And then there's also some pretty decent sets with Wigglytuff. You know, Banded Wigglytuff is not something to sleep on. Um, it's special attack and physical attack are pretty close to the same, so it can it has some damage output. The problem is its defenses suck, but it has a massive HP stat to try and sponge up some of those hits. It's really here for when I need a Wish Passer or if Prime Arena just has a terrible matchup, but I need a Fairy type, I can bring in um, Wiggly Tough instead. So, and it's a Ghost Immunity, so um, which I kind of also needed because I have played all and Dragapult both not liking to take those hits so the next pick i went and grabbed another tier five i grabbed electivire now i have never used electivire before i have no idea what it can do i know it gets motor drive which boosts its speed when it is hit by an electric type hit i believe it doesn't take damage like volt absorb um and i know it's very good as a mixed a physical banded set a scarf set life orb set um and it's base 95 speed stat, so it fills another speed tier that I was looking for. Um, I'm very interested to see how this goes with Electrovire, because I've truly never used it, never considered it. It is a mon that I use in Johto Let's Plays, but uh, 
yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious because I've been trying to avoid Zero Aura since I came back from retirement, other than the one time, other than NCL where I drafted it because I just panic drafted it. But I'm, I'm trying different electric types to see what I can use besides Zero Aura, so I'm excited for this. And last but not least, I had to take a tier four or tier three mega because I had no points left. Technically, I couldn't take Electivire. It put me into negative 40 points, but it was allowed so, because I everyone else had a Mega, so my Mega was guaranteed at that point, so I could just go ahead and do it. Um, so my choices were Obama Snow, Cameruption, or Camerupt, Cameruption runs with me, Camerupt, Glalie, Audino, Bayonet, and I think I had one more mega choice that I didn't use. Uh, obviously, I didn't use it because I can't remember it. Tears. Uh, it was a Bomb of Snow, Audino, Bayonet, Camrupt, and Glalie. Those are my choices. <laughs> so I already had uh, Wigglytuff, so you can rule out Audino. I have Dragapult, so you can rule out Bayonet. I already have three or two fire types, so you can rule out Camrupt. Um, so it's between Obama Snow and Glalie, and I chose Mega Glalie. I chose Mega Glalie because it's a base 100 mon. It gives me um, uh, spikes, so I have another spike user. I have Wigglytuff, Arrow, Claydol, Ferrothorn, and Glalie for um, hazard setting. Uh, it, it's refrigerates the normal type moves. Um, it'd be great, you know, if Glalie's getting low, I can just suicide Glalie with Explosion and just deal a massive chunk of ice damage to something and then bring Dragapult in and pick it off um, as the refrigerate boost. It's base, it's physical and special attack are exactly the same. So I can run physical, I can run special, it gives me flexibility there. Um, and this is the third mon that cannot pivot. It's the only other mon that can't pivot on my team. Megalily can't, Holt U-turns, Cinderace U-turns, Arrow can't, Zoroark U-turns, Claydol has Teleport, Wigglytuff has Teleport and Baton Pass, Ferrothorn can't, Primarina flip turns, Blaze can U-turns, Electivire has the option to Volt Switch and Teleport thanks to old generations. So... Um, but that's going to be the team. Let me know what you guys think. I'm hoping that it's not... Un I, it's it's hyperish offense. It's faster offense than I have run since I came out of retirement. But I'm hoping it can do the job. Let me know who you think is going to be the kill leader. Do you think Dragapult's going to just run away? Or because Cinderace is there, Cinderace can compete with Dragapult. Um, any suggestions to the team, let me know. But... I'm actually very excited for this team. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.